Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about future and promise. Let's start with a simple example. We have a function factorial, which computes the factorial of n. In the main function, I create a thread t1 to compute the factorial of 4. So thread 1 will compute the factorial of 4 and print the result to standard out. So far so good. This program runs perfectly well. But now, I don't just want to print the result to the standard out. I want to return the result from the child thread to the parent thread so that I can do something with it. Based on what we have learned so far, this can be done. So let's say I create an integer x. Then I pass x to the thread t1 by reference. And of course, the factorial will take second parameter, integer reference x, and x equal to is. But this is not enough. Now, x is a shared variable between the child thread and the parent thread. So we need to protect it with some kind of mutex. And we also want to make sure that the child thread will set the variable x first, and then the parent thread go ahead and fetch the variable. So we may also need a condition variable. Now our code becomes more complicated. I need to lock and unlock the mutex. I need to call condition notify and condition wait. And more importantly, we have two global variables that needs to be taken care of. So our code structure becomes pretty messy. Does it have to be this complicated? All I need to do is launch a thread and get the result from the thread. The standard library actually provides an easier way to do this job. So instead of using thread object to create a thread, I'm going to use standard async factorial for. The thread is a class, and async is a function. And this function returns a very important thing, future of u equal to async. And this future is a channel where I can get the result from the child thread. I can do x equal to few dot get. And now the factorial function doesn't need a second parameter, but it does need a return value, int. And at the end, it needs to return a yes. And we don't need all the global variables, which is pretty ugly. And let's remove all this. So our code becomes much cleaner. The fu.get function will wait until the child thread finish, and then return the returned value from the child thread. So conceptually, a future class represents an object where you can get something in the future. And a future object can call the get function only once. If later on I call the few get again, this will crash my program. So you should not do that. Now I have said that I use async function to create another thread. But that is not completely true. The async function may or may not create another thread. And that can be controlled by another parameter. Let's say I call the async function with the parameter of standard launch deferred. 
Now the async function will not create a thread. It will actually defer the execution of this function until later on when the get function is called. So when the get function is called, the factorial function will be executed in the same thread. And if I launch the async function with async parameter, then it will create another thread. And I also can all the two values together. What this means is whether the async function will create another thread or not will be determined by the implementation. And this is actually the default value for this parameter. So these two lines of code are exactly the same. And if you want to make sure that a new thread will be born, then we should use async parameter. And let's remove all the others. So now we have used the future to pass a value from the child thread to the parent thread. We can also use future to do the opposite thing. We can pass a value from the parent thread to the child thread. Not at the time of creating the thread, but sometime in the future. For that, we also need a promise. P. And we need another future. f equal to p dot get future and we'll pass the future as a reference to the thread and this factorial function will take standard future as a parameter and sometime later it can call the future to get a value f.get and let's see I'm missing a column here and this f is passed over by reference so by doing that I'm telling my child thread that I will send him a value but I don't have that value yet so I will send it over in the future that is my promise. And uh, at this moment, you just do whatever you can do and then wait for my package. And sometime later, I'll do something else and probably take a nap. And then I'll keep my promise for. So after I set the value 4, the child thread will get the value 4. And let's print something and uh, verify the program is good. X and uh, run it. So the result is 24. Let's print it out by the child and uh, get from child 24 that is printed out by the parent. So our program is good. Note that both the promise and the future are template classes with the type of integer because the value we are transmitting over is an integer. And this future is also a template class of integer because the value we are getting back is also an integer. Now suppose I don't need to get anything back from the child and after I took a nap I totally forgot that I have promised to send my child thread a value. So I have broken my promise. What will happen? What will happen is the f.get function will get an exception with the error code of future error code broken promise. 
So a promise is a promise. If I promise to send over a value, I have to send over a value. And if I really, really cannot send a value, and I know I cannot send a value, then I can set exception. And then create make exception pointer with the standard runtime error to error is human. And now, when the child thread call the get function, it will get this exception of runtime error. So instead of sending over an exception of the infamous broken promise, I can come up with a fancy excuse for breaking my promise. Note that neither promise nor future can be copied. They can only be moved, just like the thread and the unique lock. So if I create stand promise in teacher P2 equal to P1 uh, equal to P, this will not compile. I have to do stand move P. And same thing for the future. Okay, let's clean up the space and talk about something else. Now, suppose this factorial function needs to be computed many times. So instead of just launching one thread to do the computation, I'm going to launch many threads. This is two, this is three, and a lot more, maybe, maybe ten threads. Then I cannot pass the same future to all the threads because each future can call the get function only once. So if I have 10 threads, they will call the get function 10 times, which is not a good idea. Then what can I do? One thing I can do is I create 10 promises, and then create 10 future. So each thread will get its own future. But that is clumsy. Can we have an easier solution? The standard library provides a better solution, which is use shared future. Shared future can be created by calling the futures share function. And unlike a regular future, a shared future can be copied. So we can just pass the shared future to a thread by value. which is very handy. And the factorial function needs to take a shared future parameter. And it doesn't need to be a reference. Now, when the parent set value 4, or the child thread will get the same value when they call the get function. So the shared future is very convenient when you have a broadcast kind of communication model. That's all for today. Feel free to check out the other videos I have, and see you next time.